Okay, just word about us because I've got a lot to get through in 15 minutes, so it's a, a bit of a bit of a, a trek. But very quickly, we're an uh, integrated PR and marketing agency. Um, I say we're kind of app launch consultants. It's encouraging to me already that the three people who have preceded me have said a few things that I'm going to say, so it actually helps me because I can get through my slides a bit quicker. Um, so excuse me in advance if there's a small amount of crossover in anything you've heard before, but as I say, great minds think alike. So what I'm going to do, as I said, I'm going to give a very quick overview of the app stores, and then from my experience, just give you very surface level top 10 things that we talk to people about, and if there's things I can't go into in more detail, do grab me in one of the breaks, and I'm happy to talk about anything you want a bit more. So blimey, that's a lot of apps. We've already gone into that, but the App Store, 900,000 apps, which is a bewildering amount. It's heading for a million. That's iOS. Android also is catching up. We've, we've covered that just before. 50 billion apps have been downloaded in iOS and 48 billion on Android. So there's parity, and Android's going to overtake soon. And, and just recent research came out last week from Juniper, which is quite interesting, is just saying that there's going to be a significant rise in app downloads from 80 billion at the moment to 160 billion in 2017. So anyway, Richard, you've already covered this, but this is another stat from Distimo uh, that came out recently. People always ask me how many apps do I need to get top 25, top 50. Everyone's always focused on how they reach the top of the charts. Um, you can see here, and this definitely has a bearing on how much people need to spend on, on advertising as well, which is people are going to cover later today, is how expensive it's becoming if people really want to have a significant chance of ranking in the top 25 or top 50. And you can see there, as Richard said, Richard said earlier, it's about 70,000 in the US a day you need for a free app. Um, and then for a um, paid, it's about 4,000, so significantly less. OK. App marketing, where's the love? And I say that not because I want more work, but because App marketing is, is unfortunately an afterthought for many people. It's, it's not something that still people are taking seriously enough. Recent survey by AppFlood, um, who are owned by Papaya Mobile, of about 1,100 developers, ranging from small, medium to large, just questioned, you know, how much budget have you got to set aside for app marketing? Do you use specialized PR agency? And interestingly enough, 78% had allocated $5,000 or less to marketing. And also, only 9% of small developers have used a specialist PR agency. And, and small to medium is like 18%, so, so that's more. So what are the main challenges facing people at the moment? It's my favorite quote. Hope is not a strategy, because unfortunately, in what I do, I see far too much hope. People, oh, I hope it's going to do well. I hope people like it. I hope it's going to succeed. And, and hope doesn't work. So that's why I always say that to people. Here are the challenges. Sorry, I'm sounding very negative. I don't want to sound negative, but I have to paint a realistic picture to people. The odds are against you. Once again, quoting Distimo from the last two weeks. Richard can pull me up on this if I'm wrong. 2% of the top 250 developers on iOS and 3% of the top 250 developers on Android are new. So that shows you the dominance of the established developers and, and the success they're having uh, on the app stores. Market is still an afterthought, like I've said. The barrier to entry is continually rising in terms of cost and in terms of quality. I'm going to talk a lot about quality today in the short time I've got. Consumers are fickle. That goes into what we said earlier. Consumers just rush past. They make very, very snap judgments on your icon, on the name, on very, very superficial things, as well as if they recognize it, and then they'll move on or they'll make a decision. Small developers are lacking core skills. We're coming up against that a lot now. I mean. Without self-promoting, I did write an article this week on PocketGamer.biz that you can go and look at, and I've highlighted the five skills that developers are going to need if they're going to succeed uh, in app marketing. And it's quite frightening the amount of things that developers need to take on now if they're going to succeed. Lap of app marketing expertise, not that, once again, I do something that's amazing or black magic, but there's not a huge amount of people out there giving guidance to people. So I've got a few resources at the end that I'll point to that will help you out. And also large companies, you know, I, I worked at the, at the Daily Mirror for nine months, I worked on their mobile, and the interesting thing for me I see with an organization, Trinity Mirror, uh, and, and will be common to other organizations, is that there isn't one single person in the organization that can actually know what to do and can bring it all together. So you're seeing, you know, they have different agencies, there's an SEO agency, there's a PR agency, they do the submission themselves, and there isn't that one internal facilitator who A, knows best practice, and B, knows what, you know, what can be done to take it forward. Okay, huge amount of apps appearing all the time. And unfortunately, 
There is no magic bullet. There's no secret to success here. No one today is going to tell you there's any secret to success. However, I'm going to zoom through my tips now because I've probably got about 10 minutes left. Quality. The number one thing, it seems blindingly obvious, but unfortunately, my God, have I seen a lot of bad apps in my time as well as people have here. I get sent terrible apps to work with, and it's very nice that people come to us, but I'm not going to take money off anybody if I think the app it hasn't got a chance to success. It's just, it's it's irresponsible thing to do. Anyone in my line of work shouldn't be doing it, but also just, just quality is important. If you look at Flurry here, I don't know if you can see it, this is about app retention. So this is about your percentage chance of keeping someone over a period of, of a year, basically. So you can see already, after month one, you're down to, I think it's 38% of people. So you can see it diminishes very quickly. So there's another trick people can talk about today is retain, retaining customers. Benchmarking, already been spoken about here. I meet so many developers that, that, that develop in a vacuum. It's astonishing. I sit in a room with people, I say, okay, but what about this, 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 and this? And, and the amount of people that don't know who their competitors are seems obvious, but unfortunately, people don't do it enough. And it, uh, I have to say these things. Be unique and be different. Once again, it may seem obvious, but people don't do that. And that's tied into benchmarking as well. Testing, getting feedback. Very, you know, Developers operate in a vacuum. You know, people don't often give them frank, uh, frank advice. They don't tell them things that need to be done. And once again, it's quite hard to get people who can give you actually very constructive criticism um, for your app. But we do do that for people. We sit and give them pages and pages and pages of things that they should be doing. But that's something else. Got to stand out in order to secure reviews. I'll go over media later. Customers can smell a rat. We're in a reviews-led culture here, yeah? Ultimately, you live or die by your review score on the, on, the, on the app stores, yeah? It's what people are saying about you. And if you're, if you're bad, if you pay your way to the top of the app store, you're not pulling the wool over anyone's eyes, yeah? All you're doing is you're engineering your own downfall. You're going to zoom to the top. You're going to get loads of one-star reviews. People are going to say you're terrible, and you're going to sink back down again. So that's why quality must reign at all times. Customers are just savvy. They know good from bad. Apple and Google, I'll talk about them in a minute. They love quality and polish. You know, Apple and Google, that's what they're looking for. And I'll, I'll address that in a minute in a slide. Tip two, very quickly, have a strategy. Once again, I deal with too many people don't have a strategy. There's just, I've thrown loads of questions up there. I've got loads more. But you know, write yourself a checklist. What, what is my app doing? What's my, what's my launch plan? And also, what's my post-launch plan? Too many people are focused on the initial spike, the initial launch, yeah? Not enough people really give, the, give thought to the fact that there's a long tail here. This is a long game. I don't like to use the marathon, not a sprint argument, but that, that is very much the case. If people don't have, especially with freemium, I mean, so many people go, well, what, are you, what are you add, features are you adding? Well, I don't know, really. And, and people don't know, and it's, it's quite shocking. It may seem obvious, but once again, App Store Funnel, I think we've kind of gone through this before with, with the ASO and the conversion, but, but really, when I work with customers, we imagine you're taking the customer through a series of gateways. You're basically leading them through a series of decisions that result in download. And then once they're inside the app, that's slightly different. That's, OK, how am I going to get them to spend money? But as far as we're concerned, it's about a user, I said from the top, reading a review or hearing about your app. Then they're going to search for your app on the App Store, potentially. You'll search for something that you're a keyword that you're going to appear in. ASO, it's already been spoken about here. You know, that's using keyword tools that I'll address in another slide. Then your app turns up in search. Great. Then, once again, it's been covered here, so I don't go into too much depth. User just looks at you very superficial. What's the name? Maybe what it does. What are the reviews? Does it look any good? How good is the icon? And once again, very, very snap second decisions customers are making. OK, if they're interested, they click on, on the app for more. They read description, browse screenshots, and then hopefully it results in a download. First impressions count. Once again, been alluded to today, but I'm pleased that everyone's hammering these points home because people don't always think about them or don't have the ability. Customers make snap decisions, I've already said. Good screenshots, video. Video is very important. Video you said earlier was good for the metadata inside Android, but it's incredibly important for reviewers um, and the media that we deal with, and I'll talk about that in a second as well. Icon, we spend a lot of time with customers going through iterations of their icon. And, and at the end, I'll show you some resources where I've got links to some really fantastic best, best practice app icons. The name, the name should be clear. There are several arguments here. Should the name be really cool and snappy and different and unique? Yes, and you know, Waze, apparently they made quite a good job of it, having a name that didn't necessarily immediately relate to what they do. 
But we tend to say to people, try and have your name give an indication of what the app does to someone, because they're just scanning, then, they, 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 then they'll make a snap judgment. And then it's, it's hard to read this, but this is from Barbara Holbrook, who's editor-in-chief at App Craven. This is about video, but I always use this quote. It says, it's unfortunate, but I don't have enough time to download and test every app that comes out. A video takes just seconds to watch and can be the difference to whether an app gets a longer look. That's from the media, but it equally applies to customers as well. Video is definitely one, if not your most important tool for securing reviews and for securing customer downloads. And also here, it's just from Interbrand, going back to names here, there's a quote, sorry if you can't see it. It says, the bottom line, imperfect app names force shoppers to work harder, and that will mean fewer downloads for all the time you put into developing an app. Isn't the name worth the added effort? Okay, halfway through, but I'll zoom up. Understand what makes the App Store owners tick. We deal, talk to Apple, we talk to, to Google. There aren't, there aren't huge secrets here. Once again, it really goes back to quality, yeah? I mean, even if you're a big brand, if the app's crap, they're not going to bother with it. But... They do have slightly different motivations, I've seen. Apple sells hardware. You know, Apple's in the business of moving hardware. And this means that they want your app, by and large, to showcase the talents of their device, the retina display, the game center, the, the capabilities of the hardware. And that's something that, that, that turns Apple on quite a lot. Apple are kingmakers. What I mean by that is Apple will, you'll go to them, they'll say, yeah, that looks great. We'll, we'll feature it. We'll take a bet on it, la, la, la. And, and they, will, they will make your app or they will help boost your, boost your app up front before it, you know, at, the, at its initial launch stage. Um, Apple likes accessibility, you know, multiple languages. Google, Google can't stand lazy iOS ports. They're very rankled back buttons, all the rest of it. Don't make Google feel like they're second best. Google are more measured. I think Google generally like you to refine your app, and then they like you to see how many your average reviews and scores, and then come back and see whether it's going to feature. Amazon, new and emerging, but you know the device is not as powerful, Amazon. But obviously, with this accessibility of seven-inch form factor, more cheaper devices, there's a huge flood of new people coming onto the app stores, but these devices are not as powerful. So there's an opportunity there. And don't forget Samsung. Samsung embeds the App Store on every single device that ships. Build a relationship with Samsung that Samsung is definitely worth talking to. ASO I'm not going to go through now. Get to grips with it. There's tools out there in the market. You know, we, we do ASO for people as well. Um, certainly people like Searchman, App Codes. You do have to invest time in it. It is a bit of an art. It's quite technical, mathematical. You just, I would say you need to know what you're doing and get someone who knows what they're doing. Seven, spread the word. So this is the media side of things. So this is about 50% of our time that we deal with. We deal a lot with the optimization aspect, getting the app to the store, getting it in a good position. Then it comes to launching. What are things you've got to do to get your a good launch app? One, have a media plan. Obviously, if you work with an agency like us, we, we create the plan, but that's targeting your media, who you're going to speak to, what you're going to say to those people is very important and very precise. Get your timing right. What I mean by that is, this is really an iOS thing. So many people with the media want to get it reviewed, and they'll just, the app will, will be approved by Apple and just go live. Oh, go live. Oh, I didn't realize. You don't have to make your app live immediately, yeah? Part of the whole media process is you, you set your app to go live at a date much farther in the future, gets approved, and then, you, and then you just make it live on the day you want to. So you can control that as well as be you get allocated promo codes and you can give the promo codes out to the media. Also, if you're going to have promo codes to the media, do not draw down all 50 of your promo codes at once. Only do them on a case-by-case -case basis, otherwise you're just going to waste them all. Be clear, concise to the point. If you're communicating with Apple, if you're communicating with the media, you've got two, three lines to tell them what your app does. Yeah, that's all. Don't waffle, don't talk rubbish. Just tell them very clearly what it does and why you think your app is the best, and then they'll take notice, hopefully. Build a comprehensive list of your target media. We've got 800 media we speak, speak to, our, that we reach out to on our list, and then there's a smaller core, and then we build lots of different verticals, depending, like there's parent bloggers, mummy bloggers, tech sites, sports journalists. It really depends what your app does. Um, understand the media, understand the fact, yeah, what they're looking for, to be concise to them, and as well as that, they're not going to come back to you necessarily. Do not bug them. Do not drive them crazy. Every day, some of the top sites get 150 requests to review their app, yeah? Don't drive them nuts. They hate it. If they're going to review you or they're interested, you will hear back from them. There are little ways you can bug them. I won't go into them now, but if you want to ask me in the break, then I'm happy to tell you. There's no guarantees of the media. I'd love to tell you, yeah, get best friends with them. Yeah, great. We're gonna, there aren't. 
Your app, if your app's good and unique and you've got a gut feeling, chances are it's going to get covered. You are at the mercy of them. There's no secret magic way to get reviews. You can go onto forums such as Touch Arcade if you've got a game. There are ways that you can help spread the word yourself. Brands. goes back to what I said earlier. If you're a brand in the room here and you're launching an app, you've got your own touch points. You should exhaustively be analyzing what every single touch point I've got with the customer and how do I use it, whether it's point of sale, whether it's your website, newsletters, whatever it is, that's really important that you do that as a brand. And brands, once again, don't always do that. App Store, Store editorial support is the holy grail. It's actually even been said before. But very few people can get it, and it's very hard. There's no guarantees. If you, if you submit to Apple, chances are you won't hear back from them, and you'll just go there on a Thursday, and you'll suddenly see your app appearing in new and noteworthy. If you get featured in the Editor's Choice, which is the absolute dream, they'll ask you for artwork beforehand, and that gives you an indicator, but very unusual. Right, just very quickly on this. Websites are still great. Don't ignore websites. They're very good for SEO as well. A lot of people just focus on the App Store. You can integrate your website, video, social media, and also links to reviews. YouTube, really important. Second, second biggest search engine in the world. Don't forget that. Video, very powerful. You know, you can use YouTube in itself as an SEO tool. And also linking back from within, within Android that's been spoken about already. And also just social media. I can talk about social media at length, but... Once again, people are getting very sophisticated with the social media in terms of management, in terms of analytics. That's something else that you can do yourself, but it's another cap that developers are having, uh, having to wear. Number eight, mobile advertising, going to be covered a lot today, so I'm not going to go into it into great depth. But largely, things I say to clients about mobile advertising, one, there's a ridiculous amount of networks and acquisition methods, and James actually had your diagram on here that you put out a few months ago on the map of all the mobile ad networks, which is bewildering, but you can go and get that from Mobi Affiliates. CPA, cost per download, real-time bidding that's coming, blind networks, premium networks, just it, it's bewildering for the average developer. Only really works with freemium. If you're looking for ROI, if you're looking to make money back, which a lot of people are, unless it's brand awareness app or utility app, then generally doesn't work for freemium apps. Don't try this at home, I say to people. If you can, use a planning and buying agency. There are specialist planning and buying agencies out there. Um, you know, uh, Memsi, Saatchi, Mobile, Somo, Fetch. There's guys out there. I'm just talking about the guys in London, but they do manage the campaigns for you because it's coming so horribly, becoming so horribly complicated. Product's got to be good. Once again, if it's crap, you can get all the downloads in the world, but you're going to lose customers quickly. Prepare to spend big. Unfortunately, that dovetails into what I said earlier. 75,000 downloads a day equates to about $1 to $3 customer acquisition cost. So you can start doing the maths in your head. It's frightening the amount of money people are having to spend to get themselves up in the charts. Being it for the long game, I said already. Testing, tweaking, very important. And then understanding your numbers, you know, analytics, customer insight, metrics. It's another hat developers are having to wear, and it's become increasingly difficult for them because they just want to focus on making good apps, good games, whatever it is. And then someone's saying to them, actually, you've got to be really good at analytics. Last two, get cross-promoting. If you've got lots of apps out there, use your apps to cross-promote other apps. Story Toys, which you can't see very well, great guys, they do um, kids' books. They are fantastic creating an app store within, within their app, which doesn't contravene Apple guidelines, by the way. And very cleverly, although this may disappear with iOS 7, Whenever they have a new app out, they update all their existing apps and use the message to tell everybody about the new app that's out there. So they're using the update mechanism as a marketing tool. Finally, tip 10, knowledge is power. This goes into kind of Richard earlier. You can see here, tracking app performance, absolutely key, we always say to people. I'm shocked by how many people don't put in-app analytics like Flurry into their apps. But really, just going through here, Flurry, something like that will look at what's going on inside your apps if you haven't used it. And then guys at App Annie, Distimo and App Figures, you're tracking what's going on on the app stores. So inside and outside your app, you should have a very clear view of what's happening. And that's going to be a determinant for lifetime value, ARPU, and all the other things. And then Google Alerts track media coverage. So I've overshot my time, but very quickly, what does this all mean? Quality. Sorry to sound boring. Hopefully other people will say it today. If you're successful with an app in this room, I'm pretty damn sure the app's a very good one and it's a very good quality app. Customers no good from bad. Bar is rising, like I said, in terms of quality, in terms of cost, even if it's engaging specialists in terms of agencies or advertising budget. App promotion is an ever-evolving art. It's not a dark art, but there's a lot of nuances. Hopefully some of the things I've highlighted today will, will show you the areas of consideration that people have to undertake if they're going to make a success on the App Store. First impressions count. 
Brands have the advantage of existing channels that should be utilized. So brands, once again, milk your existing channels. You do not have to spend a lot of money. You've got customers already. Be in it for the long haul. Like I've said, don't just focus on the initial spike. And work with experts. I sound, <laughs> sounds like I'm trying to get myself some work here. I'm not. But it is of value whether you're looking for ASO, you're looking for PR, whether you're looking for media planning and buying. There are people out there who will deal with different parts of press to help you make your app a success. And certainly with small and medium developers, it's increasingly hard to, hard to do it themselves. And unfortunately, there is no one solution for success or magic bullet, like I said earlier. Finally, just if you want more of what I said today, on Flipboard, I've, got the, I've created the Ultimate App Marketing Resource Guide. You can subscribe to that. That's all the links I've taken in the last two years that I love to everything from apps, app icon design. You can just go and read that. That's other people's stuff. And if you want to be featured in that, come speak to me. Send me an email. I'll gladly link to your article. Almost done. And then I've just written the top 10 tips for marketing your app on Glossy. So go to glossy.com. You can see a lot of what I've said today as well. Thank you. I'm sorry I've overshot my time. Grab me in the coffee break. Thank you. <laughs>